Hello, welcome to Sheepdog Says. I'm Sheepdog, and today I want to do a video about games where you have to make decisions, pivotal choices throughout the game. Ones that have stood out for me that I've played. Um, a, so I can get some recommendations from your good selves. Um, you know, B, just because I fancy talking about it, I've literally just finished playing Detroit Become Human. I'm not going to spoil anything. There's no spoilers in this video. Um, absolutely amazing game. I am going to get some excuses in early ahead of Mature Gamer this weekend because there's two ways to play that game, casual and experience mode. And I chose to play it in experience mode and I stand by that decision and I absolutely love my playthrough of it and I will play it again for out of interest. But I'm getting flack from people who played it in casual mode and then feel like they had their perfect game and it's like... Yeah, but you had it all handed to you. The game said to you, what's that over there you need to go and look at? Why don't you have a look at that? Why don't you look at this thing? Why don't you remember that thing? Whereas in my one, it was here's an empty room. Biatch. Figure it out. Go on. So it was much more pure and unfazed by the game developer going, eh, eh, eh. Um, which... I admit, backfires for me at times, and I, I can't wait to properly talk about it. But I've had a few tweets, and I'm just like, do me a favour. You played a version of the game where they literally just dangled, you know, a path for you to follow on rails. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't say to me, oh, my God, you played it wrong. We played it the right way. When you played it on the rails the developer set out for you, making the occasional snap decision... And I played it completely just rolling down a hill on fire, trying to figure out what the heck to do. You know, that's that's a big difference in my opinion. So that's that's my bit of housekeeping there because I do second guess these games and it pains me. I hate making decisions. I always assume they're going to make a massive deal. Um, I've got I made a list of games where the decisions do bite you or or things you should know about come out, or there's little bits where you make decisions and they've plagued me for silly reasons. I'll start on the most, the silliest one, the most basic one ever. Um, for those of you who played Final Fantasy VII, there's a thing in that where depending on how you respond to just some basic conversational pieces, dictates a scene later in the game on who you go on a date with. And when I used to play that game religiously, I'd play it once a year from start to finish. I'd always try and get different variations on this. You could be really nice to Ares and you'd always go on a date with her. You could be mean to her and it'd be Tiffa. You could be mean to them both. And if you're lucky, you'd get to go on a, a date with is it Yuffie. I want to say Yuffie because that's how I always read it, being from Essex. Um, I think I pronounce all their names badly. If you're mean to her, you go on it with Barrett. And it kind of... It's quite an art to be that horrible, to end up going on a date with the big fellow with a gun for an arm. But it's all about your decisions and the way you play the game and your personal slant on it. I'm always trying to be good and honest and, and go for the... In Mass Effect, I call it the blue option. So Mass Effect's my other one that came to mind. It, it disheartens me that in that series, you're very much... <clears throat> you get to the very end and nothing you've really... You get a pool of choices i think you get three specific choices and a choice to do nothing and that defines how your mass effect trilogy ends and i've heard a very compelling argument i mean i love the trilogy i think it's one of the greatest trilogies i'll ever play but there's some arguments that that whole third game is the end there's lots of things to say ah oh, do you remember do you remember in uh three years back when you you told me to straighten up and fly right well i did and here i am and you get the res resolution of that story or do you remember in the second game when you saved my life well i'm still here for you in the end and and that all makes sense and is good but it never felt like i was dictating the entire outcome of a world um really you know it was still a cherry pick i couldn't sit there and do a spoiler cast where we talk about how in my version of events this happened because ultimately you could either 100 percent each individual character's stories or you just left bits it didn't affect the fate of the universe it was just how much time you put into it so both of those games are great but ultimately final fantasy 7 has the same ending no matter what so it doesn't matter what happens mass effect has one of a handful of endings no matter what doesn't matter what happens it's similar with the telltale games they claim that they're these broad decisional type things and so and so will remember that and there's a little bit of 
personality to it and a little bit of personalization, but it's not much. I thought when I started playing them that if I made the wrong decision in, in chapter one, that a character could die and affect chapters two through five. And it's not like that at all. You, you really can't go wrong with them. I mean, you can't go wrong with any of these games when you make choices. But <coughs> with with Detroit, you could make a decision the wrong way here or there and it would write out an entire character. And that would be it. And there'd be a main character. And do you know what I mean? There's so much flexibility there that I've not begun to, to even scratch the surface on how many different endings there are to this game. I was reading someone posted about how they got the ending that only 1% of people had seen and it was absurdly, wildly in a different direction from what I'd had. Whereas in my one, I think I got the ending that something like 19% of people had seen. So it still meant 80% of people, that, or 81% of people that played the game had seen a different ending. Um, I love certain other games where... I mean, Sukaden 2 is another early game where I really used to love how <coughs> it made no apologies for putting you in positions where you'd have a character fighting another character as part of the story. I remember there was a character's dad who was just angry with one of the boys that you hung around with and he challenges him to a fight. And the first time I played that through, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the dad and lost and thought, oh, fair enough. I mean, it's an impossible boss. The game carried on. And then I found out years later that if you <coughs> buffed that guy up throughout the game, made him your main tank gave him your best armour, gave him your best weapons and really went to town on him and then you thought just right, you could beat the dad and that person would be your tank for the rest of the game. And I remember that level of personal ability being awesome because the whole point of a Sukaden game is you get to the end and you're trying to have all 108 characters because that will help you achieve some extra level of super ending that you know completes the game and then you carry on your characters to the next story in some fashion or another and that's again ultra personalised. It'd be mad of me not to mention Shenmue, but I feel like even Shenmue didn't have that much personalization to it. It was obviously humongous for its time, but mine seemed very on the rails to every, uh, similar to everybody else's. I mean, I didn't give that the kind of effort and story and time that I should have because I got stuck on the stupid mission trying to race across the uh, warehouse in the forklift truck. So I remember you get a cat, you feed it a bit. I assumed, because I figured i don't even know really what genre i assumed this was a fantasy game when i as a kid when i was playing it um i assumed the cat might become like a sidekick later on that it was going to have some sort of magic imbued to it but it just died in a box in my one so if i'd carried on that save to shenmue 2 and shenmue 3 i'd have just had a cat corpse lying around whereas in my head in the game i was feeding it and looking after it because i thought that eventually there might be some magical reason to keep it um or it might help me in fights or whatever I hadn't really thought it through. I'd love to, I might have to do some research into that now because everyone talks about that game as being this massive open world story, but it just seemed to be wandering around, what, um, I can't remember what city it was now in Japan, and just going about pl playing on the, master, uh, the Mega Drive and the Master System and the arcade games and collecting those little figurines and, and just basically doing a bit of Kung Fu here and there. Um, I didn't, I, I really can't remember the story to that game. Um, Chrono Trigger is probably the best one I've ever played in in cartridge terms for massive replayability. You can play that game through making decisions, even right early on. You don't know until till late, like till sort of maybe two, three hours in, that the game's been measuring what your reactions were to certain things. And suddenly you're in a court case and you're trying to say that you're innocent and that you weren't trying to commit a crime. And they say, well, when you did this, this is what happened and that's what happened and blah, 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 blah. That makes you look guilty. So I think for an example, you bump into one of the other characters, they drop an item. If you pick the item up before you help her off the ground, they think you're trying to steal the item and that's why you bumped into her. So you've got to get to a point in that where there's, I don't know how many jurors, let's say 12, only because there's a film called 12 Angry Men. So I know there's 12 jurors. Although is there 13 in that film? I can't remember. Just one of them convinces everybody else. Anyway, however many jurors there are, you have to have done the. You have to have played the game the right way to get more on your side than against you, and then you don't go to prison. If you go to prison, then you have to pe play an extra forty-five minutes worth, of, or maybe half an hour's worth of game, where you're in prison and you have to wait, you have to break out, you have to fight a big boss, blah blah blah. And to me at the time, that seemed amazing that it had that level of detail and thought going into it, especially because they crammed it into a tiny little cartridge and they had a very, very limited space and, and, and 
and trees for you know branching off like that but that game also had an option where you were fighting the end boss again a couple of hours into the game and if you had spent hours and hours and hours leveling up then you could beat it and complete the game there and then it was also set out so that when you finished you did new game plus and then you go back through and you could defeat it in new game plus and end the game early you could fail i believe and lose you could you know there was loads of bits i mean you recruited a baddie in it i don't know if that was optional it probably wasn't but the point was because it was a time traveling game there was loads of extra bits i mean if you chose to play people's stories you could do certain cool things i remember you could go back in time sacrifice your robot to get an extra item or something and then go forward in time and dig him up and put him back together and carry on and and just amazing little quirky bits like that and this was a snes game so that had just no end of depth to it for such a, a tiny tiny kind of box but the game that stuck out before Detroit for me was um, Quantic Dream's other game. I've not played, disclosure, I've not played Heavy Rain and it came free with Detroit Become Human. So I'm going to play that at some point. Um, but Beyond Two Souls was a game that I absolutely loved because the, it was just perfect. It was. I mean, Kev says it's their worst game of the three they've made, which isn't exactly a bad thing to say. Maybe it is, I don't know yet. In his opinion, that was his least favourite of the three. For me, it was my first one I played of theirs. So I, straight away, I'm like, this is incredible. Um, I remember completing that and just feeling so touched that it just seemed like such a good game. I mean, that was about a girl who kind of had a an invisible imaginary friend slash force that was a part of her and you didn't know what it was. And I think even, I'm, I need to double check, it's been a while since I've looked at it, but I think depending on how you play the game depends what, that entity even is anyway and it just blows up into a massive kind of sci-fi awesome story and i remember finishing and just thinking that's that hooks me back into gaming massively i got mocked by jake body earlier on twitter because somebody hacked my twitter account and started talking about games and he's right i don't play them that often and the, full disclosure i only got detroit become human because henry cheese the legend you know, I'm so grateful, basically just emailed me and said, I'm disappointed you didn't get to play it, everyone's talking about it, buy it, here, here is the funds to do it. And I was just like, you are such a hero. Um, I'm so grateful. I, I haven't expressed that on the video, and I should have done, I should have done it at the start, but I'm so grateful because I've raced through this. Now, there are reasons I probably completed it slightly quicker than others, but we'll cover that on Mature Gamer when we do our spoiler podcast. But... Oh, this game was so good. And I can't wait to play Heavy Rain. And I've convinced my wife that it's worth her playing um, Become Human. I, I'm hoping if she likes this, we can play Heavy Rain together or she can play Heavy Rain as well. And I'm hoping that they'll bring Beyond Two Souls out for PS4 if they haven't already. And maybe I'll get to play that because these are these are me. Now, these are my types of games. I need more of these. Um, and there aren't any that I can think of that I like this anymore. Um I always steer away from big MMOs because I feel like they would absorb all of my time. I'm uh, working with some of my friends at the moment to write on their Star Citizen website and that looks amazing, but I don't want to invest any time, effort or money into actually playing it because it just looks like a time sink and a money sink and I'll never see myself again. I'll just be flying around in space all the time. So I want to just look at these sorts of 12 hours, all plot, all brilliant, do it how you like, you know, the stakes are high, people can die, things can be done wrong. If you just keep doing things wrong consistently, it'll all go wrong, whatever. I love it. I like having the option that I can I can balls it up, basically. Um, I don't often get... I don't think I've ever got a bad ending off the top of my head. I can't think of any games where I've got... I mean, Breath of Fire had the option where you played as both the goodies and the baddies all the way through the game. And then at the end, you had the choice of basically fighting as the end boss against your characters or fighting as your characters against the end boss. And because I couldn't kill the end boss with my characters because they were so under under leveled up, I hadn't grind, done enough of a grind. I just played as the end boss and killed them and completed it. And I was like, Wee, I've completed it. And I thought that was an awesome touch because it just meant you could play it both from both sides the whole way through. And I mean, again, I'd have to research. I don't remember. Maybe... Maybe he was a tyrant and a baddie and you shouldn't really have wanted him to win. But if I, I'd like to think it was written in such a way that you could decide, mm, I, you know, maybe I'd side with him. It wasn't, maybe it wasn't too bad of a decision. That's Breath of Fire 4 that you could do that. 
Um, I wish they'd make more of them and make them good. Five was a bit rubbish. They need to make more Breath of Fire, more Sukadem, more Chrono Trigger. They're great series, is, and I want more of them. I'm going to wrap it up there anyway. Um, give me some tips on games. Um, if you want to talk in private about your Detroit Become Human playthrough, then hit me up. I'm more than happy to do it. Um, just be aware, like I said at the start, if you played it in casual, I might have made decisions that seemed mental, and they some of them were, but they weren't taken with the same contextual information at hand that you got in casual mode, because I can't stress that enough. And it'll all become clear if you watch the spoiler podcast. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. Share the videos around. I've noticed at the moment, I'm doing a pattern of loads of viewers, not many viewers, loads of viewers, not many viewers. And I don't know if it's the topics, the lengths, whatever. I'm trying to analyze it. I'm trying to overthink it. It could just be absolutely relevant and people are just busy. Um, I don't know. I just try and like to understand things. But yeah, feedback, comments, all that stuff. Just yeah, keep it up. Thanks very much. And I'll see you tomorrow.